I am talking about the faith of the Bible. I am talking about the faith of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Your faith must be like the faith of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar built a tall gold statue and issued a new law. When you hear music, you are to fall down and worship the statue. The penalty for defying this law was severe. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Daniel 3 verse 6 So when the music played, all the people bowed down and worshipped the gold statue. Well, almost everyone. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down and worship the statue. They loved and worshipped the one true God. Only he was worthy of their worship. The book of Daniel says that the Chaldeans, a group of astrologers and dream interpreters, took this opportunity to go to the king and tell on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel 3 verse 8 and 12 but not even the threat of death in a furnace of blazing fire could convince the three friends to renounce their loyalty to God. They boldly declared that God had the power to save them, and even if he chose not to, that is true faith, the faith that stands. This is real Bible faith. Real Bible faith is not saying, I know God will deliver me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't know if God would deliver them. They didn't hear the voice of God. No angel had come down with a message. God had said nothing to them. The faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the faith you and I need to have. The faith that will stand in any situation. The faith that will obey God in spite of circumstance and in spite of consequences. When the fires of the furnace came for the three Hebrew boys, their faith stood tall. True faith is saying God is able to heal me, but even if he doesn't, I still believe in him. True faith is knowing God is able to deliver you, but even if he doesn't, I still believe in him. True faith is acknowledging that God has the power to intervene in my situation, but even if he doesn't, I accept his will. True faith believes God is God, even when God doesn't answer our prayers the way we want him to. When the fires of the furnace came for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God did not keep them out of the fire when they went into the fire. God did not send someone. He showed up himself. And today I have a message for you straight from heaven to tell you that God will be with you in the fire. The fire for you may be a sickness. The fire for you may be a divorce. The fire for you may be persecution. The fire for you may be a financial crisis. But rest assured, God will be with you. He promised you, I will never leave you. He promised you, I will never forsake you. Becoming a Christian does not make you exempt from the fires of life. John 17 verse 33 These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus prepared his disciples to be battle ready so that they will not be shocked when they are faced with persecutions. If Jesus hadn't prepared their hearts, they would hardly be able to stand when they were persecuted, but because they already knew what it entails to follow after Christ, 
they were ready to go through thick and thin. At one point in your life or the other, you must have felt like giving up, thinking there was no way out for you. We all have had our down moments when we thought our problems would consume us, but somehow God miraculously showed up for us. No matter how seemingly difficult our problems appear, God's Word promises us that there will always be a way out. The Israelites, on their way out of Egypt, had given up at the sight of the Red Sea ahead and the Egyptian army behind. They were trapped between two life-threatening forces, and there was no obvious way out. They had never seen the parting of water, so they possibly didn't believe it would start with them. Please take a moment to imagine the state of their hearts. Most definitely, many of them would have accepted that their end had come. But God showed up for them in a way they could never have imagined. He made a way in the middle of the sea. And the beautiful news is, God hasn't changed. He is still in the business of surprising us. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43, 19. God specializes in miracles. We see this in the way he walked with the children of Israel. Where they saw problems, God saw answers. They saw a sea, but God saw a way there. They were thirsty, and all they could see was a rock. But God saw water. This is why we must trust the Lord in all things. He is able to see things we could not possibly see. We need to look at our situation through the eyes of faith and not of doubt. When all hope is lost, God will make a way. This is why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. We must not lean on our own understanding, because it is not enough. We have a limited view of what can be done, and this causes us to put limits on God. But God has no limits. He is an all-seeing, all-knowing, and all-powerful God. Nothing is too hard for Him. Nothing is too far out of reach. We need to have faith and stop putting our limitations on God. Sometimes in life, things just don't make sense. We go through things we just don't understand or expect. But thank God for Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. The epitome of trusting in God is believing He is who He says He is. And if you believe who He says He is in the Bible, you know He is able to intervene in your situation. He is the CEO of the universe, the universe, and is in control at all times. Nothing happens without His approval or go-ahead. This all-powerful God is your Heavenly Father and is saying to you today, My child, I love you. Fear not, for I am with you. I am with you in all the seasons of life, through the good and the bad, in summer and winter. Nothing can separate you from me. Nothing can separate my love from you. All you need to do is have faith. All through the journey of the Israelites from Egypt to the Promised Land, the Bible records many miracles. When Elijah was in the desert, hiding from King Ahab, 
God miraculously sent him food through ravens. That's in 1 Kings 17 verses 4 through 6. Ravens are known to be the stingiest of all birds, but God wanted to prove his sovereignty over every created being. Daniel must have thought the end had come when he was thrown into the den of lions. But before he was thrown in, God had commanded his angels to shut the mouths of the lions. God made the lions Daniel's friends. Daniel 6.22 all over scriptures, we see God show up for his children in unimaginable ways. The Bible proves to us that God is committed to us. He is willing to bend the laws of nature in our favor. He is willing to do anything to take away our troubles. All he asks of us is that we trust in him. When we say God will make a way, what is implied is that God has solutions for you. He will make an escape for you, even in the middle of the toughest battle. The feeling of defeat and hopelessness we have is a manipulation from the devil to blind us from seeing what God can do for us. If you want to see the manifestation of God's power, you have to believe in His power to save. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me?